What's up guys? Today, I'll show you a crime mystery film. The Tall Man. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with police officers and a detective getting out of a tunnel. Then the detective instructs the officers to put yellow tape around the place, which means it is an active crime scene. After that, the detective leaves and goes to the town's precinct, where he talks to the town's local nurse, Mrs. Denning. The detective informs her that they failed to find the town's missing children. The town called Cold Rock remained the same for the last six years. It is a thriving mining town that became poverty-stricken, causing it to vanish from the map because it lacks everything. But then, something much worse happens. Children are being abducted one by one. The scene changes to a mother driving recklessly on the town's empty road with her two daughters. The mother stops at the town's local clinic and calls Mrs. Denning to help one of her daughters. Mrs. Denning comes out running to help and discovers that the patient is pregnant. Even though unequipped, Mrs. Denning helps to deliver the baby. However, because the baby is breached, it does not cry at birth. So Mrs. Denning performs resuscitation on the baby for a few seconds until it finally cries. Meanwhile, the other daughter named Jenny is sketching outside when she hears the baby's cries. Jenny has selective mutism because of her rough childhood and her sketchbook is her way to communicate. After that, Mrs. Denning confronts the mother about her husband, who is an alcoholic and violent boyfriend. The mother refuses to take her daughter to the hospital, because she does not want other people to know about her complicated family. Following that, a series of parents are shown on television. They are the parents of the missing children, and some think it is because of the tall man. The tall man is the town's mysterious myth who abducts children and leaves no trace of them. The following day, Mrs. Denning eats in a diner with a couple of customers and the sheriff. They talk about the continuous cases of missing children in the town, when suddenly, a weird woman looks inside from the window. The others immediately badmouth the woman, but Mrs. Denning comes out and kindly offers her coffee. However, the woman only looks at Mrs. Denning and leaves without a word. That afternoon, Mrs. Denning goes to the mother's house and looks for the baby, but the mother informs her that she sent her daughter and grandchild to her sister in Seattle. After that, Mrs. Denning finds Jenny by the river and gives her a new sketchbook. Jenny uses her sketchbook to communicate with Mrs. Denning. She shows a sketch of the tall man and writes that she had seen him. Later that day, Mrs. Denning comes home, which she shares with her son and a nanny. Mrs. Denning spends time playing with her son before they eat dinner. After that, she puts her son to bed and drinks alcoholic beverages with the nanny until she falls asleep on the couch. The following day, Mrs. Denning wakes up from a loud religious sermon on the radio. She walks downstairs and finds the nanny tied and gagged with bruises and blood on her face. Mrs. Denning immediately pulls down the gag so the nanny can talk, but she realizes something. Mrs. Denning quickly runs upstairs to her son's room, only to find the bed empty. She comes back down and helps the nanny, but when she looks at the door, she finds her son in the arms of the mysterious tall man. Mrs. Denning quickly follows him to his truck. She dangerously holds on to the truck's back door until it finally stops. She quickly hides from the tall man and attempts to take her son. Suddenly, a canine dog comes out of the truck and attacks her. Mrs. Denning fights the angry dog and beats it with a rock, but the tall man finds her and knocks her unconscious. After that, Mrs. Denning wakes up at the back of the truck with her hands tied. She is inside with the dog, who angrily growls at her. She desperately frees herself and attacks the tall man, while the dog bites her leg. Mrs. Denning endures the pain and continues the assault, which causes the tall man to lose control, causing the truck to fall sideways. Then the passenger door opens, and Mrs. Denning's son suspiciously comes out without any bruises. Seconds later, the tall man comes out too. He takes the son and leaves Mrs. Denning inside the truck. Unexpectedly, Jenny is on the road and sees the tall man taking Mrs. Denning's son. So she comes towards the truck, and suddenly hears a noise. Jenny quickly goes away, while Mrs. Denning finally comes out at the back. Even though injured, Mrs. Denning follows the shoe print of the tall man to the forest. While in pursuit of finding her son, Mrs. Denning unluckily falls into quicksand, but she immediately pulls herself up from it. Unable to find her son, Mrs. Denning cries in frustration before she returns to the road. Shortly after, a detective finds her lying on the ground. Upon seeing her state, the detective orders to search the tall man, and he leaves Mrs. Denning at the diner. The townspeople are shocked and confused to see Mrs. Denning's state, but the owner requests to leave them alone for a moment. Then the owner kindly offers her clothes for Mrs. Denning to clean herself up. After changing, Mrs. Denning goes to the owner's office, where she finds an altar with cropped newspapers about the missing children and photograph of her son. A staff member sees Mrs. Denning and quickly informs the townspeople that she suspects something. They patiently wait for Mrs. Denning to come out, but one of the townspeople cannot wait anymore and goes to the owner's office. 
He finds the room empty and the back door open, so he comes back at the front and informs the others that Mrs. Denning is in the forest. Upon hearing that, everyone divides themselves to chase and find Mrs. Denning like she is a criminal. The sheriff drives to a building, unaware that Mrs. Denning is actually inside of his police car. A few minutes later, the sheriff returns to his car, so Mrs. Denning waits for him to leave and goes inside the building. She wanders the floors and rooms when she suddenly sees her son standing across her in a hallway. Mrs. Denning quickly goes to him, but the kid runs away to a room, so she follows him. Suddenly, the tall man comes out and beats her right on the head. Before she loses consciousness, Mrs. Denning sees that the tall man she faces is a fake because it is the weird woman from the diner. Following that, Mrs. Denning wakes up tied on a chair while the woman talks about her son. It turns out that the kid is actually one of the missing children, and Mrs. Denning is the one to blame for all the kidnappings. The woman shares the night she saw her missing son in Mrs. Denning's house through the window and how she informed the townspeople. At first, they were skeptical to believe her accusation, because Mrs. Denning is known to be a good citizen in the town. But later on, she convinced them to give her a chance to prove it by taking her son from Mrs. Denning's home. The woman refrains herself from beating Mrs. Denning, but she asks her about the other missing children. Mrs. Denning confesses that she gave them to the tall man, so the woman asks who is the person behind the tall man. However, Mrs. Denning refuses to give his name, so the woman slaps her hard, which causes her to fall with the chair. The kid sees them, and Mrs. Denning uses the opportunity to free herself and punch the woman. Then her head bumps into a cabinet, knocking her unconscious. Meanwhile, the kid quickly runs to hide from Mrs. Denning, but Jenny unexpectedly finds him. Jenny takes the kid, and suddenly, Mrs. Denning comes out, scaring the kid. He looks at Jenny smirking, and Jenny pushes him towards Mrs. Denning. The three come out of the building, and they go to Mrs. Denning's house. Mrs. Denning gives the kid to the nanny and instructs Jenny to go home, but she stubbornly refuses. Jenny uses her sketchbook to reveal that she has been watching Mrs. Denning for weeks, and now she wants Mrs. Denning to send her to the tall man. Mrs. Denning leaves Jenny outside and informs the nanny about Jenny's revelation. Then she takes the kid and goes inside a room. Moments later, Mrs. Denning finally emerges from the room without the kid. She comes out and finds Jenny waiting for her. Mrs. Denning informs Jenny that she gave Jenny's information to the tall man, but she needs to be cautious about keeping it a secret, because the tall man might harm her. Then, Mrs. Denning instructs Jenny to go home, which she finally does. Then, Mrs. Denning returns inside, just in time for the townspeople's arrival. They shout foul words to Mrs. Denning, but she remains calm and sleeps on the couch. The following day, the police and FBI finally arrive at her house, along with the angry townspeople. On the way out, Mrs. Denning finds the nanny hanging in one of the rooms, while the angry mob attempts to harm her. Some are angry, while some seek answers on their missing child's whereabouts. After that, the police and FBI are left at home, investigating the house. Then the detective goes to the room that Mrs. Denning went to with the kid and finds that it is connected to a mining tunnel that leads to a road. The detective calls for help to search the underground, but fails to find the missing children. So the detective goes to the town's precinct to inform Mrs. Denning about it, but she remains unmoved by the news. Following that, the search for missing children continues on Mrs. Denning's land property. At the same time, the detective interrogates Mrs. Denning about her involvement with the missing children. Mrs. Denning finally replies to the detective when he mentions her late husband, the previous town's doctor. She says they failed to conceive a child independently, but their love for children never fades. So, when poverty strikes in their town and affects the children, Mrs. Denning believes she has to do something to make them suffer less. She kidnapped kids and brainwashed them to keep them in her house, where she gave them everything. When the detective asks if she killed those kids, Mrs. Denning refuses to talk again. Meanwhile, the authorities spend hours finding the missing children in the tunnel and the forest, but they fail miserably. Then they finally use the weird woman to get answers from Mrs. Denning. As instructed by the authorities, the woman refrains herself from bursting out while talking to Mrs. Denning. Mrs. Denning shares that the reason behind her acts is that she needed to save those children from growing up into a broken and complicated family, which fails to give them the nourishment and encouragement that they need. She adds that she needed to break the cycle of children growing up in bad homes that lead to poverty and abuse that passes from one generation to another. She needed to act because the government refused to help the poor, and that is why children continue to suffer. Then Mrs. Denning confesses that she killed the children because they are too much to handle. After that, the woman leaves, overwhelmed by the information. On the other hand, Jenny sees her mother engaging in a violent fight with her drunk boyfriend. Jenny helps her mother, but the boyfriend carelessly hurts her. So the mother fights back, but then laughs with her boyfriend about it. 
Jenny is disgusted by them, so Jenny runs off into a nearby field, when the tall man suddenly comes out of nowhere and takes her. At first, Jenny is scared, but later on, she calms down, and lets the tall man take her away from her family with new clothes and identity. The tall man takes Jenny to a city, where he delivers her to a new family. Then the tall man finally reveals his identity. He is the husband of Mrs. Denning, which means that Mrs. Denning lied to the whole town and authorities. The tall man refuses the payment because it is a disrespect to his wife's sacrifices to keep the organization that rescues children from bad homes and gives them to new and good ones. A few months later, Jenny's mother still grieves her daughter's disappearance, and the town continues to decline while Mrs. Denning is still in prison. The police have given up on finding the missing children, because they think Mrs. Denning buried them in the dangerous tunnels. Then, Jenny's voice overplays, and she talks about her three mothers. The first is her biological mother, whom she loves and misses. Mrs. Denning is Jenny's second mother, who loved her and gave her the chance to free herself from suffering. The last one is her new mother, who gave her beautiful shelter, education, and provided everything she wanted. Because of her, Jenny manages to adjust well to her new life, so that she can finally talk. Following that, Jenny walks to her art class when she suddenly sees Mrs. Denning's son in the park with his new family. The film ends with Jenny's voice over, questioning whether she made the right decision about leaving her family for a better life. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.